Right, this is my um, final pulley setup that I've um, done for the Chinese mini lathe um, with the VFD and the three phase motor. I've used um, what they call taper lock um, pulleys, they're heavy cast iron, and first you um, fit this um, taper lock system, and then that obviously slides onto the shaft, and you have. Um, two screws which you screw into the um, taper lock bush here and um, when that's on the shaft on the um, wood rough key you tighten down these two grub screws nice and tight evenly um, there is some torque settings I think uh, for each um, pulley size and that actually tightens it onto the shaft. I made a new um, expanding mandrel shaft with an um, 8mm thread again and um, it's got an 8mm um, wood rough key um, slot which I milled out. And I've um, drilled the indexing holes on the um, pulley there and it's a really nice system now, very smooth to operate and very positive. And I'll show you how smooth it runs and my top speed. And that's about 980 RPM. And the pulleys are solid um, cast iron so they've got some good weight to them and actually balance this um, spindle out a bit with my large diamond chuck. And in this video I'm going to show you how uh, to make up this simple turning fixture. It's a mandrel um, to hold uh, components with an inch diameter bore um, like this one here and it's great for singular items if you know that you're actually making um, one of these with an inch diameter bore then you can actually put this um, onto this mandrel and finish it off and it's also a great fixture and mandrel for batch work um, just say you had um, 10 of these components uh, which you made up on the lathe all turned to the correct diameter and the same width same inch diameter bore or whatever size bore to suit the mandrel. You could then set the mandrel up in the lathe like I have here. Um, use your tool post drill, so you're going to do these um, drilled holes in the centre here. Set the um, centre drill up like I'll show you a bit later. And then um, do all the centre drill holes around the diameter and the drill holes take the um, component off again and then put the next one up and you'd have components all identical with the holes all in the same um, position and it's also um, great to have this mandrel for extending the work out from the jaw so you can work on the back of the um, component if you want to or use the tool post drill um, so you've got plenty of clearance from the jaws and I have um, made many of these mandrels up um, for all different components and I keep a, a special drawer with all the mandrels in. Also you can make um, the mandrel with uh, one diameter on one end and another diameter on the other end um, so it becomes uh, a double ended mandrel for different sized components. And in this video I'm going to be using my multi-purpose um, live centre tool. It has a tapered bore in this end here 
which accepts um, various different type ends, the normal type which would go in the centre, drill hole or whatever, um, and many others uh, which you can actually hold um, various different um, types of work. It's a very versatile tool and it's um, very easy to actually make up your own ends. I made this one here for holding pipe and facing the end of pipe off and I made this one here with a um, threaded end which accepts a small Jacobs chuck. Um, so like I said it's very versatile and a great tool to have. Right, so I've done my um, test cut to get the actual diameter and the ring fits on that nicely. Now I'm going to turn it down to a depth um, which is shallower than the width of the actual ring. So the ring is um, 17 millimetre in uh, width and I shall set my stop for the turning tool at 15 millimetre depth. So that's the mandrel fixture finished on this end to one inch and you can actually um, turn it round and turn this end to a different diameter for different size components and drill and tap that one as well. Um, so you get actually um, two fixtures out of it. So that one goes into the jaws now and you can true that up in the jaws if you want. So then the um, ring goes on there like that. And then my 8mm um, 1 inch um, Allen bolt with several large washers and a spacer there to give it, give it more stability. Um, screw that one in the end there and lock that solid onto the mandrel. And you can make the mandrel even more versatile if you have some narrower section work which goes on too far and won't clamp up on the front here. All you have to do is uh, bore out some spacers that go behind it first, that, that goes on the mandrel behind it. 
and packs it out so that this face here um, goes over the uh, face of the mandrel and then when you lock this one up it'll be solid. And obviously the spacers would have to be smaller in the external diameter um, than the piece you're working on. So my uh, ring of aluminium here has some dents on it so I'm going to first clean up the diameter um, with a feed cut. And then I use my HSS 45 angle tool for just some chamfers on the corner there. Another good thing, um, if you're making an indexing ring, um, you can use the 45 pointed tool like this and get dead center and machine a very fine line around the diameter of the work so that when you use the tool post drill to do the drilling, you can see that the um, actual drill or the um, actual tool post drill hasn't wandered at all and that all the holes are dead in line. So now I have my tool post drill set up, I've um, centred it with that um, line I've just turned and I've locked the saddle. I've also um, checked the centre height by using a steel rule and pushed this one, it's got a centre drill in the actual chuck here, up to the back face of the chuck and pushed that one onto the um, ruler. If the ruler is dead upright then the um, centre height is correct. Um, if the ruler goes over a bit at the top then the um, tool is too high and obviously um, if it's too low the ruler will tip over at the bottom. So it's got to be dead square upright. And then to give it um, extra um, stability particularly if you're doing it on steel or drilling on steel I use my multi-purpose um, center which I got from Bangor 2MT tape you can get them in uh, 3MT as well and I made this one up to actually go into that um, center and then that one goes on the end of the allen bolt there and tighten that one up a bit and then when I do the indexing that one will turn as well but there's absolutely no way that fixture can move and then I'm going to be using my new indexing system on this um, cast iron um, pulley wheel um, that I made. I've drilled those on the Myford ML7 and I showed this one um, in a previous video. And that one locates in the 24 holes around that pulley. And I can get 24 equally spaced holes um, neatly drilled on the actual component. So when using the indexing pin assembly I make sure the lathe is turned off at the wall uh, so I can't start it up with the uh, pin inserted. I might make a um, cutout uh, switch at some point for when I'm using that one. And I've loosened the bush at the back of the um, tool post drill so then I can just connect a battery operated drill this is the quickest method and there's no wires hanging around and then I can actually advance the um, tool post drill for each um, center drill hole that I do
and then just check all the way around that I've done all of them. And then I take the um, tool post drill out and change over to the drill um, for whatever pin size I'm going to use. And when I put the um, drill into the chuck, make sure it's located on the back face um, before tightening it up. I'm using a 1 8 um, drill, which is a nice size for a pin. And to set the drill depth, I um, push the drill up against the diameter of the work and then um, set the bush at the back here um, to whatever depth you want it to go or I want it to go and lock that one up. I'm just guessing that, um, but if you want a dead accurate depth, you can obviously measure in between the uh, bush at the back of the tool post drill with a vernier. And that will allow the drill to cut to exactly the same depth um, for each hole. Or you can push the um, bush forward and lock it up against the actual bearing housing and wind in the cross slide um, to get the depth. And the last hole So that's how easy it is to use this um, indexing system. I think it's the most positive setup I've had so far. And I'm really pleased with it.